The Home Depot SEC on CBS heads into quarter number three in Tuscaloosa, Bryant Denny Stadium, dead even at 21. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson. Both quarterbacks, we expected a lot out of them. We got a lot out of them. They're both leading their teams in rushing. They've been sensational. But what do you do if you're the defense? Uh, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for that question. There you go. Uh, this is like a tennis match. You got to break serve. So, some way, somehow, you got to flip it one time. It might be actually getting two stops could win it. Somebody's going to steal a possession. Remember in the national championship when Nick Saban did an onside kick against right. Clemson? Something like that is going to happen where you steal one more position for their offense. Turnovers have been even. There haven't been any. The quarterback's almost dead even. Kickoff at the goal line. And the quarterback comparison, this is what we were kidding around about a little bit. You can't get much better than this. Oh, look at that. 10 out of 16. Both of them 165. Both have over 100 yards rushing. And let's check in with Jenny Depp. Well, guys, let me just say my seatbelt is fastened for the second <laughs> half of this game. Nick Saban reminding his team that it is a 60-minute game. Defensively, he said we need to contain Jaden Daniels out there. He's scrambling all over us offensively. He said that we need to stick to the game plan, control the line of scrimmage. Guys, he said all 11 guys need to do their job with physicality in this second half. All right, we'll see how it works out. I hope the second half's as good as the first one. Here we go. On first down, it's Diggs. And he digs for about four before the Crimson Tide can bring him down. Keenan made the stop from his nose tackle and position. And that's the first time that LSU ran their version of the triple option with Mason Taylor going into the flat. It was picked up well by Alabama, but there's three phases. The handoff, the quarterback keep, or the pitch is really the throw right. to Taylor in the flat. And that was really good for them a year ago. So in that case, it was the dive to Diggs who picked up four. Second down and six. Daniels getting some heat this time. Incomplete intended for neighbors on the far side. Uh, maybe it was Brian Thomas. It was. A little bit of pressure. Keep the push. Be physical. Don't give them any lanes to go into. And that ball could, could have and should have been caught. Perfect yeah. throw. And right in the right shoulder pad as he was slipping down. And boy, if Alabama could come out defensively with a three and out. For the Tigers to open the third, that would be just what the defensive doctor ordered. Third down and six. Empty backfield again. And the slant's complete. And still going is Neighbors and a first down for the Tigers. So once Alabama jumps into their version of the bear front, five man up front, you know it's man to man in the secondary. And Arnold's off by about six, eight yards, and that was easy pitch and catch on third and long. And a pickup of 17 to the 46. Now, wide receiver screen. That got great blown effort. up out there by Terry and Arnold. Terry and Arnold, great effort that time. You're going to get those plays, and if you can't handle the blocks by your corners, you're going to get more and more of them. Watch Terry and Arnold blow this play up, run right through neighbors on the play, and get it. Oh, was it Brian Thomas? It was Brian Thomas. Excuse me. So Terry and Arnold, okay. He was shaken up earlier in the second quarter. Second and ten. Extra man on the rush. Trying to contain number five. And they can't do it. Keenan can't get to him. They knock him out of bounds, but he's got a first down. And you're right. You know, you think you got him in the pocket, but it's a defensive tackle type player. Tim Keenan, number 96. Flush him wide, and there's no one there that can handle that speed. So he continues to tack on yardage and big chunks on the ground. That time they brought Chris Braswell inside on a stunt, and he ran right where Braswell left. 148 yards on the ground for Jaden Daniels. First down in Alabama territory at the 43-yard line. Here comes a blitz. Daniels, plenty of time. Loads deep sideline. Oh, what a catch by Neighbors, but was he in? I think he caught it. Wow. Well, I know he caught it. Did he have his foot in? They're going to call him in. Again, it's the slot on the wheel the route. The field is a completed catch. No, First he's not going to get He did. He did. It looked like he was over the white, and then he moved it back in on an angle. What a play. First of all, great coverage. Kai Moore, perfect throw. And great technique. Somehow he got pigeon toed. I know. I, I thought for sure he was going to step out. 30 yard pickup. And now a 
inside the 10-yard line goes Josh Williams. Give you an example. There's been a lot of great defensive backs in this game in the past for Alabama and LSU, but none of them, none of them could have stopped that throw. I don't care if it was Matt, Michael Patrick, Travion Diggs. That was a perfect throw. You can't stop that. Inside the 10, second down and six. Daniels, quarterback draw. Jaden Daniels heading toward the end zone. Not quite, but he's got a first down at the two. A little different look this time with the quarterback draw. It wasn't empty. Had a blocking back inside. He tries to follow him, but then he feels he can go to his left, and he's not a slider, is he? No, he's not. Deontay Lawson and Caleb Downs brought him down. But not until he got right there for Brian Kelly at first and goal. As you look up above, Jaden Daniels and the LSU offense. Everybody tucked in tight. Now the two tight ends shift to the right. That's the power side. And they're going to cut it the other way. And Josh Williams will walk in. Touchdown, Tigers. Well, the Alabama defensive line did their job. They won their stalemates right here. They held their own. But Williams just bounces off it and then just comes backwards. And Jaden Daniels says nobody's going to get him. It's wide open over there. Wow. They came up with a third and long, converted it. Then a perfect throw to neighbors from Daniels. And Josh Williams cleans up. And LSU does what you want to do when you're defer you score the last touchdown of the first half and the first one of the second half extra point is up and good coming out of the locker room the Tigers on the road have regained the lead nine plays 75 yards a little under four minutes the perfect throw to neighbors and then Josh Williams cleans it up with his third rushing touchdown of the year Less than four minutes into the third quarter, LSU has regained the lead. A great drive coming out of the halftime locker room. 75 yards for the touchdown. Kendrick Law is going to bring it out from the end zone. Another good return. Well, we talked about where the attack was going to come. It was going to come from the slot. There's the two right there, right on the sideline. Watch, we went back and looked what Malachi Moore's reaction is. He turns around and puts his hands up and goes, are you kidding me? <laughs> he was in? I had perfect coverage on that thing. Malachi, one of the best around as well. So good on good right there. Yeah, good on good with a great throw. That always is the tiebreaker. Yeah. So now it's Jalen Milrose's turn again from the 30-yard line. Law in the backfield. Milro with the pitch fake and got out for about five yards. Our game trends, <laughs> it's trending between Jaden Daniels and Jalen Milro. Back and forth we go. Those two guys sensational in the first half. Daniels has already lit up the third quarter. And both teams scoring 21 in the first half. First time in series history. And 88 games that that's happened. Second and five. Jace McClellan going to be about a yard and a half shy, maybe two yards shy of the first half. Third down coming up. A little more perspective of that 28 points by LSU. Remember, Bama came into this game defensively giving up five consecutive games in the SEC where they held their opponents to 21 points or less. 28 points already yep. in this game. And it's going to be the handoff to Miller. Jan Miller tight ropes the sideline. Everybody went one way. Jan Miller came back the other on kind of an inside handoff and he got to the edge. And right now Alabama is a set up for that quarterback sneak again and another different look after it. And LSU uses the sideline. Bama uses the sideline. Jam Miller, who Tommy Reese told us he's probably got the most juice of any of our running backs. 
And he had enough juice there to get a first down. At the 49-yard line. Milrow, plenty of time. Deep for Burton. Incomplete. Burton looking for a flag. Double coverage. There was none. Yeah, I'll tell you, that team was a stutter, but Andre Sam, number 14 that time for LSU, had this one picked off, but he misjudges it by a bit. And the ball sails. He thought he had it all the way, but it just went deeper than he thought. We saw Jermaine Burton be a star against Texas A&M. He's not a factor tonight oh, so far. Surprisingly, right? Yeah. You know he feels against these secondary guys, he can have his way, but so far, nothing. McClellan will empty the Alabama backfield on second and ten. Milrow tried to throw short, and it stuffed in his face by... Savion Jones. Watch Savion Jones. He almost breaks down like a basketball player right here. He connects himself. Watch him come in. He sees the quarterback one on one. That's him right there. Watch him come in. Now he'll break down and then he jumps up and blocks the shot. <laughs> I got it. I got you. I got you. I got you. Boom. I'll jump. Perfect timing. Great athlete. And it brings up third down and 10. Yeah. Eight for 10 in the game so far. Alabama has been on third down. Gonna have to get all of this one. Ten yards to go. Maybe it's Jay in the middle of the go. Looking for a block. Nye Black just kind of didn't know he was coming, I guess, but nine, he did it on his own. Nine for 11. Nine for 11 on third down. Take that any day. Gee. I mean, and they cannot get off the field. Obviously, they've had their chances. Long yardage and just picking it up any way they want, whether it's the quarterback run or the pass. They've had their way on third down. 18 more yards on the ground for Jalen Milrow. No spy on the quarterback either. First down at the 33 of the Tigers. Try to get Bond in motion and give it off to Roy Dow Williams this time. Well, they like to run over Tyler Booker, number 52. Let's see how he did going to the left side. There he is right there. That's their manhandler right there. He gets up, and yes, Watch him just get his defensive tackle out of the way and allow for a really, really good first down run. Second down and two as the tight end shift from left to right. And Williams again, Rodell Williams. He's got it down around the 15 yard line. So Madhouse, defensive coordinator for LSU, brings a corner cap. Brings actually an eighth man into the secondary from the secondary in, but still is able to get in there. Great block that time by Jaden Roberts, number 77, the other guard. Both guards coming through with good blocks. So LSU came out of the locker room on a long touchdown drive. Alabama trying to answer here. Back in the red zone. And Roydell Williams will score. Touchdown, Alabama. Sixteen yards for Rodell Williams and this time it's JC Latham that gets the key block on the end man a lot of scrimmage They're great offensive tackle watch the job he does three different offensive linemen get the key blocks Get into the secondary missed tackle could have been there could have stopped it. They got there late Will Reichert in for the point after so far no breaking serve <laughs> Gonna be breaking rackets before it's over. <laughs> Rackers extra point is good. Roydell Williams. The two head coaches will be breaking out Excedrin here pretty soon. <laughs> if they don't. Midway point, third quarter. Alabama answers with a 70-yard touchdown march in nine plays. Roydell Williams did the final 16, and we are even again. What are you gonna do? SEC on CBS is sponsored by State Farm. Modelo. Wheels up and Delta Airlines. And by the U.S. Army. 
Ah, the light show going on here in the third quarter at Bryant Denny Stadium, and we have lit up the scoreboard. Will Reichard with that extra point. Most by a kicker in college football history. Congratulations, Will. We'd like to have that field goal back earlier, but 500 points. We got a chance to spend some time with him yesterday and couldn't have enjoyed more his stay in Tuscaloosa. He'll really enjoy it if they find a way to win this game tonight. Fair catch at the two to bring it out to the 25-yard line. Invesco brings you tonight's scholar athletes, Josh Williams of LSU and Darian Dalcourt for Alabama. Invesco proud to support student athletes on and off the field with a donation to both LSU and Alabama's general scholarship funds. LSU three consecutive touchdown drives. Now the end of the first half and the opening drive of this quarter, which is half gone. And what a game if you're just joining it. Joining us, it has been between Jaden Daniels and Jalen Milrow. Not just those two, but they've been sensational. Malik Neighbors, a motion man for the Tigers, settles in a slot on the right side, and Daniels setting for the throw, but now he'll settle for the run. Oh, and look at that move. And then he gets hammered from behind by Dallas Turner, who's seen enough of this. Yeah, but... Uh... It was enough, but a little late. Again, he just spins out of it, does not have the edge speed rusher to that side. He's able to avoid him, and you're right, Dallas Turner hustling all the way. Comes back and make it, but holds him just short of a first down. Deontay Lofton actually got his feet tangled up and went down on his own more than maybe the move of Daniels, but he certainly helped cause it. Second and one, and I don't know if they got the one as we check in with Jenny. Got some Alabama injury updates. Bama safety Jalen Key went down in that first quarter, grabbing at his left hip and quad area. He will not return to this game. And wide receiver Ja'Cory Brooks, he is out with an upper extremity injury, guys. Well, Jenny, thank you. Ooh, just got loud in here right at the end of Jenny's report. Third down, less than a yard. They get the yard and then some. And it's Logan Diggs again. And everybody quiets down for a second to catch their breath. So, you know, you got to be talking about Alabama 9 for 11 on third down, but it's not like LSU's doing badly. They just don't have 9 to 11. They're 3 for 5. Two receivers to each side for Daniels, and now Taylor will come inside, there and the they're going to throw to him. One-handed catch. And got it to the 40-yard line. That's the first time the triple option has gone to the pitch phase of it. It's an overhand throw. But again, this could be dive. This could be quarterback keep. The third option is get it to Mason. Mason Taylor. Tight end who caught the two-point conversion that ended this one last year in overtime. LSU trying to pull back-to-back -back stunners over Alabama. Daniels again trying to spin away. He got away from Turner. It's going to be a holding call, though. And this run will not count, but he doesn't know that yet. And then he takes a shot from Malachi Moore at the end of the run. That's that wait, great matchup. Will Campbell against Dallas Turner. And because the quarterback was moving, holding. that's what Offense. produced the hold. Number 66. Right here. Here's the matchup. Penalty from the previous spot. Two the great players down. matched up. He's okay, he's okay, and then when Daniels moves, yeah, yeah, there's a grab before he gets free. That's a good call. Looks like Braswell might have been held on the other side as well, so that negates the run from Jaden Daniels. These two guys, Will Campbell, Emery Jones, played tackle a year ago as true freshman. Remember Will Anderson, the first-round draft pick of, I guess it was Houston that he went to was in this game. Dallas Turner still talks to him on a regular basis after following Will's work ethic here at Alabama, trying to be the same kind of player. Right now, he's trying to get away from that tackle again. And in the meantime, oh, Taylor dropped great. the ball. So what happens when the quarterback scrambles and you've just been the whole halftime telling, we got to keep him in the pocket, the rush kind of slows down. Look at Turner. He's playing the scramble here. 
and that allows for time to throw it, but a drop ball, a self-inflicted stop right here by LSU. Could be back-to-back, -back. a penalty and a drop ball could get a stop for this Alabama defense. Third down and 17. Not like a Jaden Daniels scramble couldn't get that much. He's looking to throw for it. Far sideline to Taylor, but well short. Got back to near the original line of scrimmage, and we're going to have to see a punt, I believe. Well, we talked about which team could break a serve, and so far that's one. Now let's see if that Alabama offense can make LSU pay. The first LSU punt of the night. Jay Bramlett, who transferred over last year from Notre Dame, set to kick. Fewest punts in the nation. That's because their offense is so good that they don't have to punt that often. And Kool-Aid McKinstry, who mishandled a few and let a few go against Tennessee. Back deep, he's going to call fair catch immediately here. And takes it around the 31-32 yard line. The faces of the Tide and the Tigers and a tie game. Adam Zucker in New York with this Jeep update. It is turning into a night of quarterback magic coast to coast. This is what you do on fourth and one when you have Caleb Williams. A little spin and then chucks it to the end zone for Brendan Rice. And the Trojans are tied with Washington 35 apiece in the third. Just a little less than that here, Zook. 28-28 here. During the break, Malik Neighbors getting worked out over there. I don't know if it's a shoulder or a lower back trying yeah, to twist looks, something out. It's like he's trying to loosen up his back, doesn't it? Milrose throw. There's Jermaine Burton for the first time. Reverses field and gets about 13 and a first down. It is interesting to watch how Jalen Milrow has earned the trust of the offensive staff for Alabama. They'll throw on first down any time now. They're not babying him. They're not protecting him. He is their quarterback, and the whole offense is in every play. It's just a look than the timing offense they've had here the last few years. Rodell Williams straight up the middle, and Williams still going. And a first down, pickup of about 15 for Roydell. We haven't who scored their last touchdown. Excuse me, Ness. Last time we haven't talked about Seth McLaughlin, but it must have been the center this time. And yes, McLaughlin gets a good block. And then coming in again, it was Robert, 77. He must have been double teaming, and then he cleans up on the middle linebacker late. Well, that 16 yarder gets it to the 40 yard line of LSU. This Alabama offensive line is making their presence felt here in the third quarter. C.J. Dupree, the tight end, in motion. And now it's Jalen Milrow looking for a block from Dupree. Got it inside the 35, where Braden Swanson Swinson brought it down. Well, I'll tell you, Jaden Roberts, number 77, is a mauler. You know, he is doing a great job rotating in there for Del Court at right guard. Watch him maul again on this play. This, oh, he just, man, he is a force between he and Booker. They are very physical. Picked up six, second down and four. Milrow throws to the outside. Kind of a dangerous throw, but he got it to Bond. Isaiah Bond down to the 16-yard line. Watch Isaiah Bond come back to meet this ball. If he did not, it would have been knocked down. Watch, he sees it slow, and he beats him to the point. Beautiful job of your receiver helping the quarterback on a late throw. Come back and get it. Boy, that is a good receiving technique. Back in the red zone now. The throw out in the flat to Bond again. And Isaiah gets and wiggles his way to the 11-yard line. Sam made the stop from his safety spot. You know, what's interesting is we called Harold Perkins early in this game with a sack. And then he had that pass play where he did not cover the back. But very, very quiet night for Harold Perkins. Milrow, 200 yards in the air now. Well over 100 on the ground. Second down and five. Alabama can get a first down at the six-yard line. And it's Jalen Milrow. Pump fakes. Jalen Milrow 
Touchdown, Alabama. Again, four for number four. Acceleration. I keep thinking about Jenny's interview where he said, I don't need to practice running. I know how to run. Watch him again put it into gear. Comes out on the triple option play. Same one that LSU uses. And this time, bang. Look at that. That's running back speed right there. A little fake. The and shake. Then he goes. And then the hammer. He's becoming a huge weapon. Rackard's extra point is good. A minute to go in the third quarter. They're mixing it up a little bit after that extra point. I don't see a flag right now. No, they shoved Will Rackard after the after the kick. The veteran kind of sold it a bit too afterwards. <laughs> When you've been around five years, you can act a little bit. At yes. Times. Kicks After it. Play. Oh, yeah, he did sell it a little bit. Yeah. 35 <laughs> 28. Gary said earlier if somebody breaks serve, it could swing the game. Alabama finally stopped LSU to force their first punt. And after that punt, 68 yards later, this guy's got four rushing touchdowns. He came in with five on the season, four tonight to cap off that last touchdown. And now Alabama's back in front. Yeah, that offensive line is really starting to wear down that front for LSU. I really think they miss Wingo up front, don't you? Yep. <laughs> Well, this one's a 35 to 28. How about 2019? LSU yeah. opened a scoring. Joe Burrow to Jamar Chase. Clyde Edwards Elair had a monster game, scoring four total touchdowns. LSU won. Joe Burrow was carried off the field on his way to a Heisman Trophy. Had a perfect season and a national title. We got that kind of game going on with that kind of quarterback play going on. Welcome to 2023. A minute to go, third quarter. Jaden Daniels and company from the 25. It's Josh Williams, and Williams goes for about five. I saw a little piece or read a little piece or something about Jaden Daniels talking to Joe Burrow. He actually got a call, and he talked to Jaden Daniels about having that calm swag. Remember Joe Burrow did that? <laughs> nice and calm, but still have the swag. He's got it down pretty well. I'd say so. And we know that Joe has it done. Yeah, oh, he's got it done. Yeah. At 50 million a year, too, by the way. <laughs> Second down at three. Taylor, the tight end moves, and now we got flags all over the place. Well, could this be the second time a penalty disrupts yeah, this offense? Offense, number 69, five yard penalty, remains second down. Again, the center. Center. You should be the one guy that doesn't do this. Yep. Same thing earlier happened to him at the end of the half. They got away with it, but watch him. A bit of a nope. fuck up. Can't do that. Nope. So that backs it up. Not as bad as the first holding, one. holding penalty. Oh, the first one that he buckered up. But the holding penalty, but five yards here, a little different. Let's see if that'll help this Alabama defense get another We're not going to get a play nope. off before the end of we the won't. quarter. We'll see a lot of four fingers in the air right now. We played three, and they've been three dandies. Some great players over the years have been in this rivalry. The 88th version, it's not disappointing us. The Home Depot SEC on CBS, we head to the fourth quarter. Alabama at home. If they control the fourth quarter, they're one step closer to Atlanta and maybe beyond. But they still got the Tigers here, but now it's intercepted. Picked off by Terrion Arnold on a tip ball. It was Dallas Turner that got the tip. He made the play. 
Back-to-back -back stops. Turner times it, and Terry and Arnold is the recipient of it. Only the fourth interception suffered by Jaden Daniels this year. And what a huge play. We were talking about not having turnovers. Here comes one. Watch it. He reads the quick throw, jumps up, and makes the play. Boom. And Terry on Arnold takes the rip. ricochet, his second interception of the season. And now Alabama in prime condition, in a prime spot on the field at the 25-yard line. And this flag might be on Alabama. False start. Offense, number 56. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Jenny talked to Coach Kelly at the end of the first, uh, third quarter. Coach, you said this is going to be a four-quarter fight. What must happen in the fourth to end up on top? Well, obviously, we got to make a stop sooner or later defensively. Um, and, and, you know, we're battling. You know, offensively, we need this possession to go well. Um, and then we got to come up with a stop. We got to fight, claw, dig, whatever we got to do. Uh, you know, find a way to come up with a stop. Our offense obviously had a false start there. You know, we're trying to change some plays. But again, it, we knew it was going to be a battle. Go to the fourth quarter here and let's go. We got a chance. Let's uh, find a way to win it. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. Well, of course, that possession did not go as planned. That was right before the turnover that sets Alabama up here offensively with a chance to add to their 35. And I think he sensed right. The holding penalty and the legal procedure penalty really forced two stops. Second down and 14. There's a little toss to Kendrick Law. And Law got it to the 20 and had his own lineman land on him at the end of that. I love the way they're using Kendrick Law. A lot of different ways to get the ball to your playmakers, and this time he reads the block to the outside by Jace McClellan, cuts in another positive play. Third and medium. Earlier in the season, we didn't see that from Ken. No, Ball. this has been a growth of the offense. Third down. Nine of 11. <laughs> Third and five. They're in field goal range right now, and up by seven. And LSU would love to hold them to a field goal attempt. Milrow with a blitz cutter. Going to try to run away from it. But there's Perkins. Oh, but it might be a horse collar or a face mask. The one guy that can run him down did. Harold Perkins can run. Was it a horse collar? Face mask. No. Nope. Nope. Here's a call. Personal foul. Horse collar tackle. Defense number four. The penalty reinforced half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. First down. Well, it indeed is a horse collar. No rope with a stiff arm, and there Perkins grabs right under the name plates. Yep. And drags him down right there. So he had him with his left hand in the front, and then he takes his right hand and says, Well, I might as well use my other hand. <laughs> Gene Steratore is with us. Gene, good call, right? Yeah, most definitely. When you get that hand around the back and then you abruptly pull that quick safety foul, right call, and uh, and good job. As you said, left hand in the front, fine. But now with the right hand there and the abruptness, foul for sure, guys. First and goal at the 10. Chase McClellan. Touchdown, Alabama. Handed to this offensive line. That defensive line of LSU is getting handled here in the second half. I think it was Tyler Booker coming on the pin and pull this time from the left side. Chase McClellan just fouls. I think it's 52. I think it's got a pull right here. It comes in. Might be Oates 45. It's both of them. One, two. Wow. How nice is that? Talk about clearing out space. They only had to go 25 yards for the touchdown. Rackard's extra point is good. First, there was an interception. Dallas Turner got his hands on a Jaden Daniels pass attempt. Terry on Arnold with the interception. 
And Jace McClellan from 10 yards out, Alabama, up 42-28. Resorts game recap. It has been a beauty. A lot of offense from Jalen Daniels and Jalen Milrow. And Alabama now with that extra touchdown. That's what they needed was a turnover to try to spread it out a little bit. Now they got the lead they wanted. So the fear for LSU was whether this beleaguered defense all year, which has been their weak point, could hold up. When you put penalties on top of it, right. it looks like they've cracked right now. The only answer for LSU is put a touchdown on the board and try to get that one stop that Brian Kelly was talking about to Jenny at the end of the third quarter. Rockets kick off, late fair catch taken at the goal line, so out to the 25-yard line. And while they bring out the offense, we've got time to test your knowledge with tonight's Aflac trivia question, which was, who are the last two college starting quarterbacks with back-to-back -back wins over Nick Saban? Jaden Daniels trying to do that tonight. Some of the teams that have defeated Nick Saban back to back over his illustrious career. Well, that's a big hint. Well, that's a lot of hint, I think. There, yes. Can narrow it down. 13 minutes left in regulation. Jaden Daniels going deep. And neighbors and Malachi Moore get tangled up. No flags incomplete. And it's gonna be roughing the passer though. Jaden Daniels down yeah, and a flag yeah. as well. Watch as he lets the ball Personal go. Foul. Right. Roughing the passer. Oh, Helmet right under the 15. chin. Contact to the hand. Turning. And he drove him into the ground. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. He did about down. everything wrong there. Yes. Oh, man. That's where you gashed the chin right there. So Jaden Daniels still face down on that Dallas Turner hit. And that means that warming up will be Garrett Nussmeyer. And boy, I hope Jaden Daniels is okay. That's for yeah. sure. And you wonder if it's going to approach targeting here. A crown of the helmet to the face of the quarterback. I wonder if that will be reviewed. Take a look at this one in regular speed. And there's no slowing on number 15. And as Gary said, under the chin, maybe with the helmet, and then driving him in. You can't do any of those things. Gene Steratore is with us. Gene, what do you think? I think you're talking about what Gary alluded to. And look, the quarterback in that position is defenseless by definition. So forcible contact initiated to the head and neck area could potentially lead to targeting. It's the indicator. Now, he doesn't lower the head. But the initiated contact, to me, is right to that head and neck area. Uh, that's what I think they would be looking at. And I wouldn't be surprised if they review this, fellas, for sure. Looked like Jaden just said, I'm okay, but I don't think he feels that no, okay right no. now. I can only imagine that Devin White is out there going, I vote that as targeting since yeah. I got called for <laughs> one a little less than that. So enter Garrett Nussmeyer, and we'll see if Jaden Daniels can come back. Again, Dallas Turner, who's been chasing number five all night long. And yeah, he, built, he beat Will Campbell inside that time. Been pretty much a good matchup all game, but that time Dallas Turner won, and then Jaden Daniels lost. Let's see, this is going to move the ball out to the 40 yard line with the penalty. And they continue to have a look at their star quarterback on the sideline who's in the hunt for, or in the discussion at least, for the Heisman Trophy. They're checking the jaw right yeah. there, right? He easily could have a broken jaw. 
They are not re well if they reviewed it they didn't stop the game to review it. Nope. So now backup quarterback in. We saw this in the SEC championship last year. It's not that Garrett Nussmeyer is not a capable player but now he's in a two touchdown hole with 13 minutes to go. Nussmeyer sidearms it out complete to Thomas. Terry on Arnold made the tackle Arnold with the interception earlier that has Jayden, given Alabama this lead. Jaden Daniels back in the game. You know you like your backup quarterback when you got him and go in there cold off the bench and let him throw. Yeah, that's right. He picked up five on that throw and a tough son of a gun. Jaden Daniels right back in there after making sure his jaw worked. Flags down. Emory Jones got the early kick move. They've been given a lot of leeway. Offense, number 50. To these tackles. Remain second down. But on this one, for Emory Jones, he's not going to get the benefit of the doubt because the linesman was standing right next to Nick Saban when he moved early. So it goes back to second and ten. Third straight possession of penalty for LSU on offense. They could not overcome the last two. And the clock's running down. They're going to have to take a very valuable timeout now. Time With just under 12 minutes LSU. to go in the ball game. Alabama up a couple of scores. SEC on CBS is sponsored by Invesco QQQ GMC Allstate and by Jared Bryant Denny Stadium lit up as the team has Gone to a two touchdown advantage. We asked you the athletic trivia question last two college starting quarterbacks to win back to back over Nick Saban. We gave you some teams to help you guess Rex Grossman, Florida, and Drew Brees from old Purdue, Purdue. Anytime you can get Drew Brees and Rex Grossman into an answer, I'm, <laughs> I'm putting them in, right? Well, I know we did at least one of those Drew Brees know, ones. For sure. <laughs> so Nussmeyer is back in at quarterback. So the one play that Jaden Daniels was back in apparently had some second thoughts maybe about whether or not his jaw or whatever is okay. Nuss Meyer flares it out and that's dropped. Yeah, Diggs couldn't hold it. Wasn't going to go anywhere though that time that Alabama zone defense was ready for the flare and that was going nowhere. And again if you missed it a couple of minutes ago this was a hit Dallas Turner on Jaden Daniels. Man. Gene Steratore talked to us during the break and felt that that at least should have been reviewed as a possible targeting and Jaden now you can see the number five in the injury tent right now. Meanwhile his understudy Garrett Nussmeyer faces a third down and ten. So but it's not going to come right here. No, Alabama was misaligned no, no. that time and they took a Alabama. timeout. It is their first. So Alabama takes its first time out each with two remaining. With 11.54 to go in a vital game in the SEC West. Let's take a look at our Ford game changers. These guys change every game, Gary. Yeah, why not? I mean, when they got the ball in their hands, they're attacking any way they want to, almost. Pass, run, and, and these guys get in the open field. I'll tell you. Jaden Daniels and he's elusive, but this guy, Milro, is fast. I mean, he's super fast when he gets in space. Watch this one. Boom! Downhill. The last piece of the puzzle for Jaden Milro, getting him involved in the running game. And I think getting him involved has been a big part of the success of this offense. Third down and ten for Garrett Nussmeyer in relief. Of Jaden Daniels who's out with an injury and he throws high and incomplete intended for neighbors in the double coverage and it's fourth down. Well Garrett Nussmeyer has a gun 
and he believes he has a gun because he tried to fit that one into no room. And it looks like LSU is looking up at the clock, down 14. As you look at the comparison between the two quarterbacks, it looks like LSU is deciding with our back real quarterback on in the 10th, we still got to go for this. Wow. Well, maybe no choice. And according to Brian Kelly, well, here could be the ball game from the 40 yard line for the Tigers. Flags all over the place. Snap never got to Nussmeyer. And he's just said punt. I think it's going to be the center Snap again. Offense. That's three. Yep. Five yard penalty remains fourth down. And it might be actually a good break for LSU. You know, I mean, uh, the rush was coming. It demanded a punt, it seems like, and that one was all messed up. Everybody's me. I double, double clutch. clutch. That's again. three of them. Three double clutches. That's. That's three too many. You said it. <laughs> so, Bramlett. Three straight stops by this defense for Alabama. All with penalties involved for LSU. And fair catch called for and taken by Kool Aid McKinstry. Back at the 25 yard line. Dallas Turner made some mistakes. Isaiah Bond made some big plays. So did Jace McClellan. Alabama 42 28. They look through the ring of Bryant Denny Stadium, 42-28. And Jaden Daniels, the star quarterback of LSU, on this hit by Dallas Turner, has gone to the tent. Jenny's got more. Yeah, Daniels has been inside the tent for over six minutes now. Guys, I'm told it is concussion protocol. He's going to be out for the game, and his mom just joined him inside the tent. Oh, boy. You know, it's a sensational game that he played too bad it couldn't go all the way to the end of the fourth quarter because I'm sure he had more magic left in him but that's the night for him meanwhile the other star quarterback Jalen Milrow with four touchdowns on the Knights and his offense with a two touchdown lead yeah right now that Bama offensive line They've already in the second half rushed for 114 yards. They'd like to take five minutes off. Yeah. Even if it's a field goal, that could be the difference in the game. Alabama scored touchdowns on its last three drives. All in this half. And they're taking their time now, too, with the play clock. Pick up a four for Roydell Williams, second down at six. Look at the evenness. Oh, that's a bad snap. And somehow he got a hold of it. And now that might be dangerous for LSU's defense. Although they do bring Milrow down after a short game. So I think, third down. I think Seth McLaughlin, instead of double clutching, just clutched. And he just sent it. When nobody else was ready, the center snapped it. He was the only one moving on the play. Very fortunate that Milrow was able to react and get this ball. That could have been a changing play for LSU. It's one of the best receptions of the night Absolutely. by the quarterback. And he also picked up yardage on the play. Yep. Made it a manageable third down. Third down and three. Milrow, quick slant. Got it to Burton. First down. So watch. This is the timing. This is the timing that we've seen in this Alabama offense for the past few years with Bryce Young to uh, Mac Jones. Look at this one. That is the old slant play we've seen so many of. And this time Milrow puts it right on the face mask. Perfect. Uh, first down at the 10 minute mark. Blitz coming off the edge. Milrow's going to run that way. Ooh. He got nailed after a short game by Major Burns. Burns has been in on a lot of tackles tonight. I don't know if that's good news, though, if you're an LSU defense. No, you'd rather have some of the front guys. Are the linebackers right? <laughs> There's what I was just talking about in the second half. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. And one came on a short field after... 
The Terry on Arnold interception. Bond, the motion man to Gibbs to McClellan. Got away from the first guy. And picked up about three. Yeah, Jordan Jefferson, number 99. He's the guy that replaced Makai Wingo in this game. Couldn't quite corral him. And Burns is the guy that's down. Burns was in on the stop. Transferred from Georgia. And shaken up on that last hit. Major Burns being helped off, holding the back of his neck. He's already got a horse collar a roll around his right. shoulder pads there. And I think you're right, Gary. I think it was the, maybe the Dude, tackle before. We were talking about it in the break that the tackle before when he popped up with that, he did go helmet to helmet on that previous tackle. And I wonder if it's just more of it. Here's the play before. Watch him dip down and collide his. Yeah, he got stung right there. Yeah. Okay, he, he stays. stayed in for another play and made another tackle, but yeah. not feeling so good after that hit. It's going to be a corner blitz from the top right here. They're down at five. Milrow switches McClellan from one side to the other. Looks like a little confusion for Alabama's offense. Now they're set. Ooh, safety blitz instead. Milrow's going to take off. David Milrow's got the first down, spins his way. On another great looking run. Oh, 11 for 13. They bring the blitz. It's not the corner blitz, it's the safety blitz to the boundary. Milrow sees it, knows it's coming, knows he has a, had no chance on the hot route, so he just runs it up the middle for the first down. His IQ of playing this position is just getting better and week you, in. And you got to give all credit to that coaching staff. They brought him along. I thought the coolest part of Jalen Milrow was that. South Florida game when he was benched and he stayed with the team right. he congratulated every quarterback every time they came to the sideline he won his team over that day and then he just kept improving week in and week out yes out of bounds goes McClellan don't forget before we're done we'll have the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike subs might be a sub that's got some crimson in it the way this thing's going with seven and a half minutes to go Second down and six. Alabama trying to go to eight and one and six and zero oh in the SEC. LSU trying to find a way to stop their offense and give them at least a chance to work their way back in it here in the fourth quarter. McClellan got a first down. Perkins made the tackle. Jenny. We all fell in love with Jalen Milrow's laugh after Alabama beat Tennessee, but his mom, she's loved it from day one, from the first giggle. She said that his laugh was infectious. Guys, Jalen told me that that moment post game was just so funny. The mere thought of Coach Saban chewing on a cigar was one of the funniest moments that he's experienced. It's a moment <laughs> he said he'll have forever, and it's a laugh that I know I'll never forget. <laughs> yeah, he cracked us all up that night after Jenny presented Coach Saban with a a uh, cigar that he would chew on, but yeah. not light. Yeah. And this is going to be one of those nights which you think about chewing on one, two, if you win it, because right. well, this, you're heading into the home stretch with a chance to win the West. And this nine play drive with two key third downs, one the slant pass and one with Jalen Milrow on the scramble up the middle. That took off the clock. They're going to kick close to seven eight minutes off the clock with this drive exactly what you want your offense to do in this type of game situation and LSU only two timeouts and playing with their number two quarterback not the recipe against Alabama here at Bryant Denny Cordell Williams I don't know how he made a few yards out of that looked like he was going to be stopped for a loss and still picked up about four here's what I was talking about you go to eight and one and six and zero, oh, and you've already beaten Ole Miss. That stretches things out for you a little bit. Yeah, they'd have to lose both remaining games. And if you didn't see earlier the second game of our triple header on CBS today, Georgia survived at home against Missouri, so they're on top of the East. Alabama right now on top of the West. And as you think on that road to Atlanta right. that Adam and BJ and Rick always talking about, 
We might have a collision again between these two powerhouses. We'll see. Got a ways to go and a few games to play yet. One more thought about, you know, they'd have to lose both. It's at Kentucky and then Auburn. Both of them away. And this would drop LSU to six and three. You know that no two lost teams ever won the college football playoff. Every offense that loves to run the ball effectively when they have to. Yep. This is what Alabama's doing. And whistled before the play. Pretty sure LSU only had 10 men out there. That's not enough the way these offenses no, are. No, Ness, I was wrong. They had nine. That's even worse. The ghosts that launched a worldwide phenomenon are jumping across the pond and landing on CBS. Hey, we say cheers to that. See it from the beginning. The UK ghosts start haunting us Thursday, November 16th, right here on CBS. A fourth down coming up. Fourth and one. They might just be trying to draw them off sides and they're going to kick a field goal. This is the 12th play of the drive if they snap it here. And this drive started, Gary mentioned this, with 11.41 on the clock. So they've used seven minutes, and now they will walk to the sideline. It makes it a 17-point game, a three-score game. You got a great field goal kicker. I think the good choice by Nick Saban. They already burned a timeout by faking they were going to go for it, and then they end up getting a, taking a timeout. I think that's the right call. So as Riker comes out to attempt the field goal, Jaden Daniels, who's out, injured right now, but what a show he put on for us, including the opening touchdown to Neighbors. He ran all over the field. He's under concussion protocol right now in the tent, but, you know, Heisman Trophy-type performance before that hit by Dallas Turner unfortunately took him out of the game and took him away from us because we have so enjoyed what he has done tonight and last year as well. Some of the games we did with him, he's just out of sight as a player. And there's the numbers he had. Four total touchdowns. Led the team in rushing. So this is a 43-yard Will Reichard field goal attempt. Oh, and missed again. Missed again to the right. Same kick. And he is disappointed in himself. So those are the first two field goals he's missed this year. And he just gets a pat on the rear end from Coach Saban on the way by. So it just hung out there that much too far. Well, but it means the game's not over. Nope. You know you're a good kicker when Nick Saban pats you on the back. Yeah. Missed with two of them. So it's back in the hands of Garrett Nussmeyer with four and a half to go and only one timeout. Nussmeyer steps up, throws on the run, throws a strike to Neighbors at a first down LSU. Nussmeyer came in in relief of Daniels when he was injured in the SEC championship game and put up big numbers. But uh, time is of the essence right here for LSU. Garrett throws quick to neighbors again into Alabama territory. And we're under four minutes. And he's going, come on, guys, we've got to hurry. Alabama 43 on line, second down at five. Throw to the outside. This one's complete to Lacey. And he's thrown out of bounds. When I spoke with men, Mark, Mike Denbrock, the offensive coordinator, about Garrett Nussmar, he goes, we would just put him back in the top pocket and let it fling. And that's what he's going to do, just fling it. And it's the only recipe they've got right now. Down by 14. Got to keep throwing. Nussmeyer, high, but tipped away. Incomplete. Neighbors, the intended receiver, and Terrion Arnold again with a hand in there. He had the key interception earlier, remember? Yeah, 
Neighbors could not come back to the ball because he had to jump for it. Remember early in the game when Isaiah Bond came back and caught that one? A little lower throw, he would be able to step into it. Alabama fans want to celebrate in three more minutes. They hold out of this two-score lead. Nussmeyer off his back foot. Short game across the middle to neighbors. Time permitting, Adam, Rick, and BJ will have all the day's best highlights on the U.S. Army postgame show. Those guys have had a long day, as has Gene Steratore. And we appreciate your work, fellas, all of you. At least they got good games to watch. They all. did. <laughs> Third down at eight. Two down territory, obviously. Safety blitz coming. Rushmeyer fires long. Nobody home out there to hit the pylon or close to it. Mason Taylor that time pulled up. He judged the coverage, knew he couldn't get back there, and stopped, hoping for a stop route from Nussmeyer. Taylor's going to come on the wheel, but he knows he's got nothing there, so he says, I'm going to stop. Now, remember, Nussmeyer and Taylor don't work together as much right. as Jaden Daniels. Maybe it would have been read better. Here's the game. Fourth down and eight. And the crowd, knowing what Gary just said, just erupted. Nussmeyer pressured, throws, caught by neighbors. Nope, he it. bobbled it. Yep. And that could be it. Ball well thrown. Neighbors yeah. takes his helmet off because he thought he should have had it, and he should have. And how about this Alabama defense? For two big games in a row, they we were here, Tennessee in this one. Yep. They shut them out in the second half. Never would have thought that. Either game. Not with those two offenses. So neighbors who came in with big numbers and had another very good day is now having a sad time on the sideline because it's probably the last time he's going to be able to touch it. Yeah, my fault. LSU did score in the third quarter. We just been reminded. A shutout. Chase McClellan. <laughs> nice run. Next Saturday, SEC on CBS. Back at our usual 8.30 Eastern time slot. One of these matchups for you. All starts with a drive to Atlanta and State Park College football today. That's next Saturday on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus. So Nick Saban said our defense needs to play disciplined. It was a lack of discipline from the LSU's offense that got him in trouble. Just a run into the middle of the pile trying to drive for that first down and they get it. And that will just about do it. Should be time to go victory formation. Boy, it's sad to see number five and sitting in that spot. Sure is. What a great performer, great game today before being injured. And again, it's concussion protocol according to what they told Jenny as he took it right in the chin on that hit by Dallas Turner. And that was the last opportunity really for the LSU offense to get in the kind of gear that he can put them in. Well, after that early touchdown by neighbors, we wondered the message to this Alabama offense could the other part of their team stand up to a high-scoring game? They sure did. Well, the people have been looking for points from this Alabama offense. They're going to be happy with 42 tonight, I can tell you that. Came in averaging 31 a game, just under 31 a game. And we're looking for more from number four. <laughs> they got a whole load of it tonight. Jalen Milrow takes a final snap the knee. Alabama goes to 8-1 and one and 6-0. and oh. Jaden Daniels out of the tent. So Alabama gets a little payback from last year in Baton Rouge as they win on their home field. 
And the finals 42 to 28. So the 88th edition of this rivalry was really a classic until the final half and a great drive by Alabama, even though they missed a field goal to burn up clock, and that took care basically of the fourth quarter. Yeah, that first stop of the second half was the key, and the two quarterbacks both came through when they were in there, didn't they? One's got the game ball in hand, and one's got a towel over his head. And Nick Saban's got another win over LSU. Jenny? Coach, you said that great competitors rise to the occasion. How did you rise to the occasion tonight and stay atop the SEC West? You know, the players did a great job in the second half. Offense did a great job of controlling the ball, kept the ball away from them. We got a couple big stops on defense when we needed it to get up two scores. So that kind of changed the game for us. But, man, I'm proud of the way our guys competed in the game because it was, it was a tough gut check, you know, when they scored right before the half, but they bounced back right in the second half. You said that the greatest birthday gift would be a solid team performance. Over 500 yards of offense out there. Is that good enough for you, Coach? Yeah, I'm good. It's happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, Coach. All right, Jalen. You said there was a hunger within the building. You said there was a hunger within the building this week. How did you play with that hunger out there? Number one thing, it was Coach's birthday earlier this week. So that was the birthday gift right there. But, uh, no, the, the message in the locker room was just one play at a time. I constantly wanted to build and grow as we approach the field. And that was a team collective win, and I'm proud of the guys. Great birthday, Greg. Congratulations Definitely. out there. Roll Tide! <laughs> <laughs> There's the smile and the laughter from Jalen Milrow one more time. And now it's time for the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. Jalen Milrow, you would think, would be involved, wouldn't you? I would say so on uh, this to give Alabama the lead that they would not relinquish with his touchdown run. Eli Gold called it like this for Alabama Radio. Here now Milrow fakes the throw, rolls to his right, and his fourth touchdown of the day. A 10-yard run for Jalen Milrow. His fourth touchdown of the evening. And the Crimson Tide has now taken a lead of 34 to 28. So that was four for four. And then high fives with the fans in the end zone. And he's still having a good time. And why not? His team is on top of the heap in the SEC West. A perfect 6-0, 8-1 overall. Ole Miss a game back, but they've already lost to Alabama LSU falls to four and two that's going to wrap it up for us our final trip to Tuscaloosa was a dandy we've enjoyed every trip here none more enjoyable than this one tonight for Gary Danielson Jenny Dell Dean Steratore our entire CBS crew Brad Nessler saying so long from Tuscaloosa final score tied 42 Tigers 28 this has been a presentation of CBS Sports Good night from Tuscaloosa.